Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be talking about breeding soils, so let's just get into it. Breeding soils can be super complicated, so we're gonna dive right in. And I actually think this is where a lot of people go wrong with their crickets and their cricket farms, and probably some of the reasons why uh, crickets aren't being born and people aren't seeing the growth in population that they'd wanna see. So, firstly, we use coconut husk. Now, you don't have to use coconut husk. You can use whatever type of soil that you want to use, but you just have to make sure that it really holds onto moisture for a long period of time. Now, you can change the environment in your container and make it more humid so the soil doesn't dry out as much, but that just means that your crickets will probably take longer to actually hatch. Because the really key factor is around that 10 to 15 days with crickets. If they are drying out too quick, then the eggs will die. But if they sit in moisture for too long, then the crickets will also potentially, the eggs will go moldy. Now we have two photos. I'll show you the first one of the crickets and the soil is nice and dry. And you can actually see that the egg has hatched and there is no cricket in it. And then this second photo where the soil has been too wet and then the eggs actually gone moldy and then the pinhead has actually died within the egg. So there's a very, very big difference between those two and how much moisture that you, or how much water that you put into your soil. But with coconut husk, we find that it's really good at holding onto moisture. And another key factor of coconut husk is crickets can dig into it nice and easy. So I'll show you some footage now of what I mean by that. The crickets are just like burrowing in, like they're going down and laying the eggs nice and deep. So yeah, as you can see, the crickets are getting in there nice and deep. Um, that's a really key factor. So you don't have to use coconut husk, but it is important to make sure that the soil that you use is easy for the crickets to dig into, but then also uh, it just holds onto moisture. That's a really, really key factors. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through um, right now what we do with our breeding soil. And you know, we've got a block already set up over here. And there is a little bit of leftover uh, soil from last time that we were mixing some up. But yeah, we're going to get cracking into this block here. So I'll show you some footage of us mixing it up right now. While this breeding soil is just soaking up the rest of the water in here, so you can see if I can break a bit off, that's still quite dry. <laughs> um, don't have to worry about it because the water will spread around to the rest of the dry stuff. 
Now I just want to head into the second container, our pinhead container that we've got set up just here, the newest one, and I just want to explain those two photos a little bit further, um, what you saw just before, so let's just jump in here. Okay, so you remember those two photos, how one was dried out and the egg is actually hatched, and another one was still wet and the egg actually looked like it died, it went all mouldy. So that's just something to be conscious of when you start to remove your breeding soils or you think that all the eggs have actually hatched out of them. Now, depending on how your farm is set up, but if it's set up like ours, all we do is we take our adults from over the other container, we take those breeding soils, <coughs> and then we put them into here, and we let them sit here for maximum of 15 days at the moment before we get rid of them. Now that can obviously vary if you're having some trouble with your eggs actually hatching, depending on your temperature and depending on your humidity as well, that will affect how quickly your crickets actually hatch. Now there's plenty of videos on the channel that explain that. But however, we're talking about breeding soils <coughs> right now, and you can see that we've started to remove, remove some of the soils in here and there's still some crickets on there and that moisture or the actual soil still looks a little bit wet. Now we're going to leave that in there for a little bit longer until all the crickets have got off the actual soil itself or the soil has become dry. And the example I'm going to use is just up here where you can see that there is absolutely no crickets on there and the actual soil is completely dry. Now, you can get a little microscope, and that's how we took the photos of the two pictures that you saw before, to actually have a look to see how wet your soil is really getting. But, obviously, you come up here, where, where is it, this tub just here, you've got heaps of pinheads running around, so it'd be pretty safe to assume that all the eggs have gone out of this top one. But with something like this, where it's still really fresh and new, you can see how wet that soil is and there's absolutely no crickets running around. So these guys need a little bit longer until they're fully hatched. So what we'll do now is we'll head outside. Um, I'll probably have to make another video on removing the breeding trays out of here because that is a little bit more complicated. But at the same time, if you don't get your soil right from the word go, then you're gonna have troubles anyway. So I'll head outside now and show you how wet our soil actually is when we put it into our breeding trays. Okay, now let's just have a look at our soil that we mixed up before. Now, what you can actually do is you can use hot water on for your breeding soils because if you use hot water, then the crickets, because crickets like being warm, then they'll just run to the hot soil uh, straight away, whereas if you use cold water, it might take them about half a day for them to actually start laying on the soil because it's not warm enough. Now. What we do on the farm here is when we've got our soil ready to go and we give it a little bit of a squeeze test. So we grab a bit of soil and we just hold it in our hands and then we literally just squeeze it and see how much water comes out of it. Now that's the perfect amount of water. Now I'm squeezing that as hard as I can and hardly any water is coming out anymore. So if your water, if it looks anything, if it doesn't look anything like this when you squeeze it with the water running out, um, you either one need to put more water into your breeding soil or and obviously if it's dry so there's like a little bit of a dry part just here you can see the color difference uh, you need to put more water if your soil looks like that but obviously if you have any more water running out than that then you've got a bit of a problem and I'd probably either try topping it up with more soil or yeah, just squeezing it out before you actually put it in to so slow, squeeze it out and then you actually just put it into the breeding tray just there. And that is pretty much what you need to know for breeding soil. And one of the last things that I want to talk about with breeding soil is you can reuse your breeding soil for a certain amount of time, but uh, you'll start to notice that it starts to get really fine and it breaks down really easy or you might actually start to see if there's a bit of mold forming on it or different colors and like feces like you start to see that like crickets crickets will um, they will put their waste products into the breeding soil so over time you do need to change your breeding soil over and we recommend you use the breeding soil about five times before you change it over um, or you get new stuff and then what we do with our old breeding soil is we actually just put it into our garden. It's really great fertilizer because obviously it holds moisture and it's got cricket feces in it as well. So yeah, it's really, really good for the garden so you don't have to waste it. 
But yeah, I would only recommend reusing this stuff five times. Um, and then yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know when it comes to breeding soil. So yeah, in summary, uh, just gotta make sure that you get the right amount of water in your breeding soil. Um, remember those two photos that I put up here earlier. Those things are pretty key. And then obviously when you're removing your breeding soils and looking to take them out from when you think that the crickets have all been hatched, just remember if it's completely dry, then you're not gonna get any more crickets out of it. But if it still does have some moisture on it, then there might be a chance that the crickets are still alive. But if you've had the eggs sitting there for a long time and your soil was way too wet, then the, there's probably also another good chance that the crickets have died. So in summary, that's pretty much all you need to remember, um, it is simple but it is complicated at the same time because it is quite a judgment call by how much water comes out. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. So yeah, don't get disheartened if you're not having the population that you want to see on your farm increase as quickly as you want to. And yeah, we've been through it all. So yeah, if there's any more questions that you have about breeding soil, make sure you leave them in the comments below. Thank you once again for all the support that you, we have on the channel. Uh, I think we're like well over 750 subscribers, which is pretty cool. And yeah, uh, if you need any more information on it, also just shoot us an email. Um, you can find that on our Instagram, shoebugs, or it's shoebugs at gmail.com. So yeah, have a great day everyone, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.